What's up, I'm Troubleshoot. In my previous video, I showed you how to install Destiny Rising using the official Moomoo Moo player, which is suggested on the Destiny Rising website. However, a surprising number of people have had issues with launching the official Moomoo Moo player, which is understandable. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to install and play Destiny Rising on PC using BlueStacks, as well as some tips to get some extra performance out of it. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the description down below, you'll find a link to immediately download download and install Destiny Rising using just one click. Just hit play Destiny Rising on PC here and it'll download the BlueStacks installer with Destiny Rising pre-configured. So we'll open the installer, wait for it to open, and now we can click through the install. By default, it installs to C program data BlueStacks, but you can place it elsewhere if you wish. I'll agree and install, and now BlueStacks is being downloaded. Shortly after, when this is complete, it'll download the Android emulator, which is how this works. It runs a virtual version of Android with the game inside of it. This is around 600 megs. We'll wait for this to finish. Finally, it installs and then shortly after, there we go. Now it actually starts up and in the background, you'll notice that your browser opens up with an invite to BlueStacks on Discord, which is a great place to go if you need any extra support and things like that. For now, BlueStacks starts up and asks us to change some special settings. This requires changes to the app player settings, so we'll do so here. BlueStacks starts the actual Android emulator and shortly after, we can install it from Google Play, for which we'll unfortunately need to sign in. This is the official normal Google Play app. Signing in here allows you to install this as well as many other apps from the Google Play App Store. If you don't trust BlueStacks with your Google account, that's fine, just make a new account here. I'll skip turning on backup, and finally we can install Destiny Rising. So bam, there we go. I'll skip adding a card, but you don't actually need to add one, and now the actual game is downloaded, 2.7 gigs. When you launch the game, a couple more gigs will be downloaded, but that's pretty normal. In the meanwhile, let's go ahead and optimize BlueStacks. In the top right, you'll see this little icon over here, the poker button. This is the menu for which we can then open up settings and customize our BlueStacks instance. Inside of here, we can change, for example, the CPU allocation to give our system more or fewer cores. By default, eight is the highest that this goes, and usually four is the recommended amount. Depending on your actual physical CPU install in your system, you'll have different options here. Usually leaving it at the highest is the best. Then memory allocation, you can change this through different modes, but by default, it'll use around six gigs. If you right click your taskbar and choose task settings, or you hit control shift and escape to bring up the Windows task manager, under the performance tab over here, followed by memory, you can see how much RAM is installed in your system and how much is available right down here. I have a ludicrous amount, so I can give a ton to this BlueStacks player instance and we don't really need to worry about it. But for the most part, what's recommended is choosing around half of your RAM available in your system. If you've got 16 gigs, choose high. If you've got 24, choose extreme. If you've got eight, choose enhanced. Anything below this could cause issues with different games. By default, for most games, six to eight gigs is preferred. As I have a ton of system RAM available, I can select 12 and forget about it. Then performance mode, there's a few different options here. This changes a couple of settings under the hood, but for the most part, if you've got around eight to 16 gigs of RAM, choosing balanced is the best option if you're gonna be running Discord, using a browser and things like that in the background. If you have more than 16 gigs of RAM, choosing high performance is usually the best here. As far as I can tell, these mostly have to do with RAM usage and things like that, as defined on BlueStacks' website when you click the question mark over here. However, if you wanna give the game all of your system performance, choosing high performance is the best option. Then frame rate, we can go all the way up to 60, but we can enable high frame rate over here and crank it all the way up to 240, which is great. You can enable VSync if you're getting screen tearing, but I would recommend leaving this off. And finally, we can display our FPS, which I would recommend. If you change anything here, you will need to save changes and restart your device, which is just the BlueStacks emulator. I'm pretty sure the download finished in the background, but you can always leave it to just after. Yep, we're about a third of the way through. Checking out the burger button, followed by settings once more. On the display tab, we can customize our game's resolution, or at least our device's resolution. The recommended is 1080p. For some reason, it's chosen a smaller number for me, but usually the lower you go, the more performance you'll get, especially on super low-end graphics cards. If you've got a really powerful system, choosing 1080 or even 2K is a great option. 
Choosing 4K might be a little bit demanding and especially not required if you don't have a screen that reaches all the way up to these high numbers. I've only got a 1080p resolution display plugged in, so that's as high as I'll go here. Pixel density, 240p is fine, and the higher you push it, the better your games might look, but the less performance you'll have. You can change your cursor style and change the scaling over here, but for me, that's fine. It'll want us to restart, unfortunately, so we'll do it once more. Heading back to settings once more, graphics, Vulkan is the best option for most games, interface renderer, auto is usually the best, I wouldn't play with that, ATSC textures beta, you can click the question mark for more info, in theory it should give you better performance in certain games like Seven Nights 2 and these ones down here, but for the most part adaptive scaling texture compression isn't really something you need to worry about. Scrolling down just a little bit, Nvidia GPUs above driver version 545 no longer support hardware decoding, so choosing software is your own only option for better performance. With that in mind, we'll just leave it at software decoding for now, but you can always try changing this if you wish. Then GPU in use, always make sure preferred dedicated GPU is selected here. Then game settings, we can change certain games to launch full screen by default. Devices, we can change how a device plays sound, uses a microphone and a camera if you wish. Gamepad, we can enable a gamepad here and enable a vibration if you've got one plugged in. Preferences, you can change your language and things like that. By default, Bluestacks does report whatever game you're playing to Discord, so it shows up just under your name. If you don't want that happening, just untick this checkbox here. And if you wish to turn off ads during gameplay, you can do so here as well, if you wish. Down here are a few more options, but I'll skip over them. Save changes, phone, we can customize what model the emulated phone appears as to different games. We can change keyboard shortcuts if you wish to use any of these. User data, we can free up space, removing any unused items from Bluestacks, saving us some drive space, and we can back up and restore the entire virtual device if you wish. Then advanced, you can enable ADE or debugging if you know what these are. And finally, about. That's it. At this point, we've now optimized our system for some better performance in game. And if we hit play over here, followed by going full screen using this button here or F11, change the game mode from keyboard to gamepad or touch, we can accept and the actual game starts up. The first time the game starts, there is a pretty big download of textures and things like that. So you will need to wait for this to finish. There's a couple of different things that'll click by. Now in the future, whenever you want to play this game, you can use either the Destiny Rising Bluestacks shortcut placed on your desktop, or you can launch up the normal Bluestacks 5 emulator, which takes you across to your Android's home screen where you can choose Destiny Rising, go to the Play Store and things like that. The Bluestacks Multi Instance Manager allows you to customize Customize the different virtual devices you have on your system, make more with different versions of Android, for example, and things like that. If you wish, you can change instance settings here, where we can change performance, display, and graphics options very similarly to how we did in Bluestacks, but it just means you don't have to restart the player between each screen. Also, on the far right, you can sideload apps using APKs with this button here, trim memory to lessen the amount of RAM used, create, replay, or record macros, control shift seven, take a screenshot or a video recording, change from landscape to portrait mode, enable airplane mode to disable Wi-Fi and things like that in the player, shake the device if your app supports any of that, then this button over here allows you to set your geolocation, emulate it as a different place if you wish. Finally, the speedometer over here is eco mode, which should cap your FPS, use less power and things like that. Finally, at the bottom, we can turn on or off a sidebar, which usually has notifications and things like that. But yeah, let's just wait for this download to finish and then we can test out the actual performance. And there we have it. It's finally done downloading. We can select a server. I'm fine with EU. I'll just use a guest account for now. Select an age, confirm, agree. And there we have it. The game actually starts up. I'll choose our body type, sure. And now we're dropped into the actual game itself. There you have it. Immediately, your mouse and keyboard should be working. So you can look around and of course, move around. And if you're wondering about your FPS, you can monitor it in the bottom left corner there. Now, if we pause the game using escape and head down to audio and graphics, graphics over here, we can change the graphics mode in game. I'll choose quality here, which raises all of our in-game settings. And most importantly, HD texture should help with making things look a lot better. Frame rate, I'll raise it all the way up to the max of 120. And at this point, tabbing back in, you can see that we're sitting at a solid 120 FPS, which is fantastic. So yeah, now all that's left to do is to run around and play the game as you'd hope. So hopefully this video helped you. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Yeah.